morning. Well, we finally come to part three, in my opinion, of the seasons of life. And we'll cover two seasons, the two last seasons of our life this morning. And these are thoughtful sermons that we can apply to ourselves and our lives. Those that are younger might see what the older ones were thinking, and we as the old ones remember what the younger ones are thinking because we were there. The seasons of life is taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 1 through 8. Solomon said to everything there's a season, the time for every purpose under heaven. And we're all serving in different seasons of our life. Maturity, autumn time, is what we'll be talking about this morning. The season of provision, Proverbs 20, 29. The glory of young men is their strength. But the splendor of the old man is the gray head. Oh, I remember when. And by the way, if you don't understand what gray head means, if you don't, then you think I'm losing my wisdom every day. It's talking about we've learned from experiences. God gave us the time to be where we're at today. And all oh, how, what a blessing it is that we have changed we have gathered all this information through life, and here we are today with thanksgiving in our heart. Youth is not better than old age, nor is old age better than youth. Each has the glory of its own. And each has its handicaps. The young and the old have temptations. We also have triumphs, young and old, and discouragements in a well-ordered life. Nothing, but nothing is more ridiculous than an old person that hadn't grown up yet, really trying to act young. You know, I thought about combing my hair like Elvis today. I did when I was 18 and 19. I think if I tried it, something would be missing. It just doesn't work, does it? We're not young anymore. But I find... I find my way to prove myself worthy to God and worthy to other people, even worthy to myself on the few minutes that I have left. It also should be remembered that the gray head is the glory of the old age only if it is to be found in a righteous manner. You know, we spend our whole lives trying to build something on this world. And if we could only spend our whole lives, and so many have in this building spent their whole lives, trying to build up their righteous life unto God. We might not be able to work harder today. I know I can't. But we, we can work smarter. That's what they make tractors and big old machines for. From all the mistakes I made and the victories and defeats, I can honestly realize now how short life is. When I was a young man, when you were 40 and 45, I thought you were ready for your deathbed. You were ready. Now that I'm 74, I'm thinking 90 looks pretty young. In many ways, maturity is the most fruitful period of our life. I've learned to focus on others, finally, in my old age, instead of me, myself, and I. What I want, what I think, what I feel, it's all about me. I got the best answers. I got... What about other people? I've grown up. I realize everybody around me needs my love and my attention. Everybody around me needs my encouragement. Everybody around me needs me to be what God wants me to be. God sent me here to hopefully obey the gospel, live a life where I could go to heaven. But I also instructed as he went up into the air the final time, boy, you go into all the world. You preach the gospel to every creature baptizing them in the name of the Son. And that's what we're all supposed to do. All of us. Hopefully with the experiences of life, like witnessing mistakes of others, and realizing our own faults, which may be harder to realize what I'm doing wrong more than what you're doing wrong, we can make a decision now based on our experiences of the past. You know, in my old years, I've stopped beating myself up over something, and I believe you have too. On the past, 
I turned forward and I started being thankful to God for His long suffering in my behalf. So many times in my life, if I had left this body and gone on to the Hadean realm, I'd be lost forever. God knew me before He made the world. He created the world for me and you. He breathed life into our bodies, into our spirits, in our mother's womb. And He brought us out here so that we could obey His will and go to heaven to grow. Realizing God gave me the extra days I needed. And I needed them so bad and so many times in my life. I needed time to repent. I needed time to be able to have insight on how to be righteous through the blood of Jesus Christ. I needed time to accept and really understand the sacrifice of the cross was for me. I needed that time. And I'm so blessed as you are that God gave it to us. We've seen the younger not able to control their tongue or their actions. Just blah. I was bad about that. Or their uncontrolled response. I don't believe I was the president of that club. But Lord willing, I, in my older years, I realized through experience of harming others in the ways that are now realized to be shameful in my mind and my heart that I'm past that. I'm wise enough finally to control my tongue, to accept humility, and to stand against pride. I can now say I love you to anybody I want to. Oh, that's what old people do. Yeah, we mean it. We love you and we want your soul to go to heaven forever. It's a godly love. I want to show my love and compassion. And now, now that I'm older, I can. When I was younger, that was something I didn't want to do. It, it was a sign of weakness. <laughs> oh, how I needed to mature. The tongue. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. James 3.9 Wow. James 1.26 If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is honestly worthless. Mark 9.42 I had to learn this through many years of experience. I have now learned it. I learned it years ago and I've been trying to grow into this and apply it to my everyday life, every breath I take. Thank God that He gave me the years. I'm not there yet. I'm not perfect. I'm still working on it, trying hard. But listen to Mark 9.42. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him of a great milestone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If I could only convince the immature as I was to be encouragers, to thank God for the time He has given me to be able to realize and finally become an encourager, not a complainer, not a fault finder, but one that encourages. I'd love to be Barnabas, or thought of Barnabas in this lifetime. I'll never gain that. But in my old age, God's been so blessed to all of us that we are nearing that a lot more than we used to be. It is a time to mature in what we know and apply the knowledge to our hearts and lives and be thankful to God for the knowledge to be a partaker as an inheritor, a co-inheritor actually with Christ, with all the other saints. Colossians 1, 9 through 12. We thank God constantly that we were given the time to reach the final product. All these things I did in life, here I am today. 1 John 4, 18. For there's no fear in love, but per perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. And whosoever fears has not been perfected in love. I'm amazed that it is me up here preaching this. 
me preaching forgiveness, me preaching humility, me preaching against pride and being proud and thinking I'm it. Thank you, God, for the school of life. And I believe all the elders in here can relate to that as well. It is time for passing on what we've learned and for us to grow. This is a time to not only know but exemplify in our lives that knowledge in our actions and our words that we've grown. We've grown through the experiences of life. At our full age, we have our senses exercised to discern both good and evil. God, you gave us this time, and whether I'm perfect or not, and I'm not, I'm better than I was. And Lord, I intend to be better tomorrow than I am today. I realized how important it is. Yes, I do live one day at a time. I am me, and this is the only chance I've got in life. This is the only minute that I'm sure of that I can repent or obey God's Word. This is the only minute of my life that I can show you that I love you, that I, that I have compassion for you and your soul. It's also the only minute you have. Let's not waste it. You learn that in your older years. Often we might wonder about the patience of God that He had for me and you. How did He put up with me all those years? How did He not stop loving me? How did He not stop chasing me? Always after me, wanting me to go to heaven. We might wonder why God has blessed us with enough time to right all the wrongs in our lives. To help <laughs> others who may be going down the same wrong paths. You know, I'm the president of all that. 2 Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slow about His promise, as some count slowness, but He is patient toward me and you, not wishing for any to perish, but all of us come to repentance. Again, this adds to my thoughts in my older years of how thankful I need to be to God for another day He's given me. God, how did you love me through all those years? How do you even love me now? 1 Corinthians 13, 11, When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, when I became a man, I put away childish things. I actually think of myself as a servant to others today. And now I can see how much I need every one of you in my life to make my life full. But especially I need God at the center of my life, the forefront of my maturity. And I need to, when I lay my head down tonight, thank God for another day that you gave me. And thank Him for giving me all these years and me trying His patience and me testing His patience. He let me live. Ecclesiastes 11.10 Therefore we move sorrow from your heart and put away evil from your flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. Didn't mean nothing. All those things that used to bother me. All those things that I held my hands high and I thought I was the victor. I was the champion. I was something else. Means nothing today. And it'll mean even less in eternity. The one thing that will mean in eternity did I reach maturity as a Christian? Did I realize the love of God? How many times in my youth did I not care about eternity? 1 Corinthians 2, I fed you with milk, John, not with solid food. For until now you were not able to receive it. And even now, you're still not able sometimes. Now I enjoy studying God's Word. I'm with my eyes on heaven and my arms spread wide to help anyone. I wish I could say that it was true in my whole life, but it wasn't. I came in touch with all these things, and now I have peace in my life. It's all the older people do. And isn't it beautiful? And aren't we thankful to God that He had His patience designed for us? It's a time to broaden our concerns now as older Christians. Philippians 2, 3, and 4. 
let nothing be done through selfish ambition and or conceit. Oh, I was bad about that as I was younger. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. That's the opposite from being prideful. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but for the interest of others. Have I ever thought of all the words that came out of my mouth when I was inexperienced, of all the people that are hurt, of all the confidence of others that I destroyed? Let us thank God for giving us a full life. And I mean a full life. So that we can finally become what God wants us to be. Oh, I'm not ashamed of getting old. I'm proud of getting old. I've heard people say, oh, I'm not going to tell you. I hope one day I can say I'm 100. I'll say it with pure thanksgiving in my heart. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 and 2. Though I speak with the tongues of men, tongues of men and angels, but I have not love. And as I was young, I don't know that I did. I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. In other words, what I say that comes out of my mouth without love is not worth opening my mouth for. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, I'm real smart. And though I have all faith that I can remove mountains, if I don't have love at the center of my heart, I have nothing. I think it takes older, wiser years, a lot of experience to understand and really appreciate that, that Scripture. Who would have ever thought that we would be the loving people sitting here today together. Each one of us make up the church here at Ware Ranch. Each one of us looks upon our past and thinking, what a wonderful God to get me here. 1 Corinthians 13, 3 through 5. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not loved, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. My way or the highway. It's not provoked. Thinks no evil. It took so many years for me, and I'm sure you too, to be able to get to the point where you can look at yourself now in the mirror and say, God loves me more than I ever dreamed of. I need to understand love as He does, and I do more now in my older years. We all have regrets. I wish I could go back and become more of a loving person decades and decades to go. I can't. But I can't control what I do the rest of my life, however long that is. 1 Corinthians 13, 6 and 7. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. God has loved me when I was His enemy. I did not really even understand, especially a godly love. How could I love my brothers and sisters? I understood how I loved my wife, my children, and my immediate family. But now in older years, I've wrapped my head around a godly love. These are the people that I will spend all of eternity with. We need to look at each other in different eyes. We're a real family. We need to respect each other. We need to love each other. We need to cherish each other. Because we're going to be spending many years together in eternity. During youth, our view centers on ourselves. Boy, did me. During your young life, we focus on our spouse and our family, I did that. If only I'd realized how important it was to really know God and understand how fast my days are slipping away. What time I have left, God, I intend to give you the best I have. It's not much to offer. But what I do have to offer will be the best I have, and I will do it. Why? Because He gave us enough time to reach that maturity. Let's be thankful for every day God's given us folks. James 1.5, if any one of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, 
who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. You know, when I was younger, the thought of death, I couldn't even wrap my head around it. <laughs> now I realize that every day of my life is a pure blessing. You know, I used to hear the old folks say, say I said, what are you doing today? Oh, I'm, I'm looking at the sunshine and the dew on the, on the grass, and I see the flowers growing, and I thought, what a boring life. I had no idea how beautiful that is in the land. And it is beautiful. John 4.14 Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? It is nothing but a mist. A puff of smoke. And it's gone forever. Not just some idea or something to be taken lightly is death. But now's the time to look up and see that the horizon encompasses more than we previously imagined. Life is not all about me. It's very much about having concern for all my brothers and sisters, all the people on this earth, all the people I'd love to spend eternity with and so many people won't. Thank God He gave me enough days to change and repent. And thank God for another day that I'm still trying to be stronger. And only with His help will I completely make it one day. Heaven and hell is as real as it gets. Those were just words when I was younger. And now that's the whole meaning of life. Where am I going? To heaven or hell? The elderly, the final season, wintertime. I tell you, strength might be gone, but it doesn't mean it is stopped. True strength, true strength is not in the body but it's in me inside this body. This is where I have strength today. Not as strong as I want to be. I'm working out every day of my life in prayer and in study. I want to have enough strength that I can not only fight the devil as he comes at me, but I can be such an influence that I have everybody around me to feel that strength within their souls and they stand up and fight the devil and overcome as well. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. The, the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, you know, all of us may get sick and suffer before we die. But our light affliction, which is but for really a moment, to compare all of eternity, I don't want to be one that gets sick and beaten down, and now I lose my soul. It's only for a moment. And I'm old enough to now grasp 10 years as a moment. It's working for us in a far more exceeding and eternal way of glory. For we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. The things which are not seen, which is your spirit and mine, our forgiveness from God, our righteousness that we can find in the blood of Christ. We can't see, but it's there. It's time of loss. Friends die, family, and even beloved spouses die eventually. For many, work comes to an end. Not have enough energy anymore to go to work. For those who have invested wisely in the Lord, it's a time of honor. Proverbs 16, 31. If we wait until old age, we won't have the strength to invest. Ecclesiastes 12, 1. I may not have the strength left in me to invest in my soul much as I could when I was younger and strong, but I'll tell you what I've got. I've got another meaning God has given me, and I refused to let the devil conquer me, and I know you do too. It's a beautiful thing. Immaturity. Wisdom and understanding come to the aged because of the time spent in their younger days. We learn from experience. I don't want to act like that anymore. Have I learned anything from my younger days that made the changes that I needed to make? I know I've learned a lot. Have I made changes? Yes. Do I still to make others and I still need to be better? Yes. Yes, I do. But now, this minute, 
as a sister of mine always says, all I got is today. I take it one day at a time. Well, I'm going to make you go one beyond all. <coughs> I've got this minute, and that's all I got. The difficult time in a race is not the beginning when you're full of energy and young. But the final laps, when all your energy is gone, you must hold on to the end. Hebrews 3.14. I want to receive the crown of life promised by the Father. And the only way I can do that is to obey the gospel and help others do the same. Brothers and sisters, a whole lot of us in here have reached the final seasons of life. Don't feel sorry for us. Be thankful because we're grateful for the blessing you've got to give us another day. And let's be so strong and so wonderful, full of love, that we can help the middle-aged and the young ones find their way to heaven with complete certainty. If you have a need, come.